Hey, welcome to Feature Request, the game, the show, the show where you, the audience, suggest features and mechanics for a game, and then I build them, and then I show you how to build them yourself. I really gotta start cranking these videos out, so no fucking around today, just straight to business. Create a panel, which will come in a canvas. Rename the panel Red Screen. Color it red by clicking on the color box. Take note of how the screen labels its properties, R, G, B, A for red, green, blue, alpha. Alpha being how transparent something is. Scale it up two by two by two, so it will for sure cover the whole screen. Add a Playmaker FSM to the panel, name it Red Screen. Drag the image component from the inspector into the first state on the red screen FSM and set property. Property to set is material, color, A. For set value, create a new variable, call it red screen alpha. Check every frame. Add a get FSM float. On our player game object, create a new FSM, call it player health. In the variables tab, create a new float variable, call it player health and set its value to 100. Then create a new float variable called red screen alpha and make sure it's set to zero. Back in our red screen FSM, set the get FSM float game object to the player. Select the player health FSM, select the red screen alpha variable, store the value as red screen alpha, select every frame. Back in our player health FSM, add a float compare action. Float one is player health, and the float we're comparing it to should be set to zero. Both the equal and less than events should be set to a new transition called player dead. Check every frame. Make that player dead transition to a new state. Call the new state player is dead. Add an animator play action and set the state name to whatever the file name of your dying animation is. Okay, now here's a quick Mixamo tip I wish someone would've told me a long time ago. Uh, let's say you uploaded a character model to Mixamo, set all the joint positions, hit go, let Mixamo do its thing, found a bunch of animations you like, downloaded them, and started using them for your game or film or whatever. Then later in production, you're like, oh shit, you know what, I need to find a new animation for this character. And you go to Mixamo and you realize you've uploaded different character models to Mixamo since that first time you got all those animations. Okay, no big deal, you say. I have the original uh, character model, so I'll just upload it again and set those joint positions again. Well, guess fucking what? It looks all fine and dandy when you're in Mixamo and you find your animation you like, but then you import it into Unity and try adding that animation file to your character and suddenly it gets all thwacked out. Well, that's because the nuances in topology being bound to the character rig are so minute and specific that you're gonna have a bitch of a time placing these joint positions in the exact same way you did the first time. So now what? Start all over with this new import and then never change the character on Mixamo until you're completely done with your project just in case you need another animation down the line? No, just upload one of the Mixamo exports from that first batch and you won't even have to choose those joint positions. It'll just remember everything from the last time. And that's how you can hop between models on Mixamo without completely fucking the topology of your characters. Add an enable FSM after the animator play action. Choose the player controller FSM and uncheck enable so it disables it. Add another enable FSM and do the same thing except for the player animations FSM. Back in our NPC behavior FSM, at the attacking player state, add a get FSM float. Specify game object as the player variable. The FSM name you'll have to type in manually, which is player health. Just make sure you spell it exactly how the FSM is spelled. Then the variable will also have to be typed in manually, which is also player health. Then store the value as a new variable player health. Check every frame. After that, add a float subtract action, subtracting five from the player health variable. You can honestly set it to whatever you want. This is the amount of damage they're dealing to the player. Check every frame and per second. If you don't check per second, then the amount of damage will change depending on the hardware performance of the person playing the game. Every second makes it a more uniform result regardless if you're on a piece of shit or some crazy NASA shit. Lastly, you need a set FSM action so that new health value gets sent back to the player. Specify the game object as the player variable. Set the FSM as player health and the variable to look for as player health. Set the value as our player health variable. Check every frame. To get the red screen working, we're gonna add another get FSM float, but this time with a float add and another set FSM float. These will have almost exactly the same settings as the last one we just added, except this time the variable we're getting and setting is the red screen alpha. And instead of a float subtract, our float add will add 0.1 to the red screen alpha every frame per second. And that's it, now the player can die. Stay tuned.
to the next episode, where we find out how our hero will fight back.